Welcome to September's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is basic calculator. Given a string s representing a valid expression, implement a basic calculator to evaluate it and return the result of the evaluation. You are not allowed to use any built-in functions which evaluate strings as mathematical expressions. If we're given a string like 1 plus 1, we want to return 2. If we're given a string like this, we want to calculate everything and return 23. They give you a couple of constraints. You can see the string could be pretty large. So we probably want to do this in O of n. And strings can consist of digits plus minus parentheses or white space. Now one thing to note is we could have a minus being used as a unary operation. So that just means like we could have minus parentheses 1 plus whatever, whatever, meaning that the whole thing needs to be negative at the end. OK, so say that we're giving this string here. How would we solve it normally? If we were to solve this normally by hand, what we would do is probably solve everything in the enclosed parentheses first. Here we can see 4 plus 5 plus 2 equals 11. And here this would be 14. After that, we'd solve everything else. This would be 12 minus 3, so that'd be 9. And finally, solve everything here with 23. But we really can't do that here with programming. This is programming. Uh, we could, I suppose, look for the enclosed parentheses and try to do some sort of recursion, but that's going to be very inefficient. How can we do this in one pass? After all, our length is going to be quite large. So if we were to do this in one pass, what we would probably have to do is store some par partial information somewhere as we move along, because you can imagine whenever we have a parentheses, we want to calculate everything within it first, right? But we can't just keep track of like everything rolling. We have to store like the last operator that we've seen, as well as whatever we calculated so far before. So uh, with this example, we'd have to have the stack. What we'll do is add whatever we've calculated so far. Like here at 1, we've calculated 1. We're going to add that to a stack here. And we'll reset our output and also store the last operator that we saw. That would be a plus, just in case this is, if this is a minus here. Um, now. Once we do that, we'll reset and calculate everything within this parentheses. This would be 9, be 11. And when we see a, another closed parentheses, what we're going to do is uh, take what we've calculated so far and use the sign to see if we want to add or subtract from what we've gotten so far. So if this was a negative, we would actually, um, we would actually say 1 minus 11, like this. And this sign here is what we're going to keep track of to make sure to do that. So we have to have a couple things to store here. We have our output. That's what we're going to return. We're going to have the current number so far that we've calculated, as well as the sign, which is whether we've seen a plus or minus last, as well as stack. So this would be 0, 0. Sign would be, we'll start with 1. And stack would be just a list. So for C and S, there's four possibilities. We could have a digit, we could have a plus or minus, or we could have parentheses, right? And depending on whether it's a open or close, we're going to behave a little bit differently here. So if it's a digit, it's pretty simple. What we want to do is just make sure that we calculate the correct number, because we could have like 123, but these are all strings, right? So to kind of take care of that, we'll say if C is digit, We're going to get our cur and say cur times 10 plus the integer of c. And this will make sure that we calculate the correct number. Now, otherwise, if c is equal to, or I should say n plus or minus, well, there's a couple things we want to do. We want to reset our current to equal 0. And we want to add to our output whatever we've calculated so far. So we'll say output plus or equal. Uh, cur times sine. Now, depending on whether this is a plus or minus, if c equals minus, then we want to set this sign to equal uh, negative 1. Otherwise, make the sign equal to 1. Okay, so I'm just going to put this up here. Okay, so we've taken care of the operator. Now, what about a open parenthesis? Well, this is where it gets tricky. If it's an open parenthesis, we want to store what we've calculated so far onto the stack, right? So we'll take our stack and append our output right now. And we also want to reset this output to equal 0. 
but we also need to keep track of the last sign in case it's the un unary where we have to like subtract the whole thing. So we'll say stack append the sign that we saw last. And we can reset our sign here as well. And finally, when it's a close parentheses, notice I can't do else here because we could have white space. Uh, what we'll do is we've reset our output, but we could have a, a new output right now, right? So first add the current time sign to our output. And we are gonna pop off from our stack whatever the last operator was. So this would mean we're just gonna multiply this whole thing by whether it was a plus or minus because we're gonna either add or subtract the whole thing, right? So we'll just multiply by stack pop and then we'll add whatever stack pop is here as well. And I believe we're just gonna have to reset our current now to zero, but we don't need to do anything else. Finally, we return our output. But one thing, we also need to add the current time sign here because we only finalize our output when we see a close parentheses, right? Or, or a upper operator. We could have, you know, even one plus one here. That last one wouldn't be added. So we'd have our current number here and our sign. So we'll just add it at the very end. And that should be it. So let's make sure this works. All right, let's just do a more complicated expression just in case. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's go and submit. So there you go, accepted. This is all of n time complexity and space would be the same because of our stack. Now, there are some other variations to this. You could use a combination of stack and recursion. You could possibly use two stacks, uh, but it starts getting really complicated. I found this one to be the most simple. Um, so hopefully this helps. You know, my first approach at this was quite the mess. So uh, this is a very difficult problem as far as I can tell. So. All right. Well, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.